Chapter 33, A London Cab Horse. My new master's name was Jeremiah Barker, but as everyone called him Jerry, I shall do the same. Polly, his wife, was just as good a match as a man could have. She was a plump, trim, tidy little woman with smooth dark hair, dark eyes, and a merry little mouth. The boy was nearly 12 years old, a tall, frank, good-tempered lad. And little Dorothy, Dolly, they called her, was her mother over again at eight years old. They were all wonderfully fond of each other. I never knew such a happy, merry family before or since. Jerry had a cab of his own and two horses, which he drove and attended to himself. His other horse was a tall, white, rather large boned animal called Captain. He was old now, but when he was young, he must have been splendid. He had still a proud way of holding his head and arching his neck. In fact, he was a high-bred, fine-mannered, noble old horse, every inch of him. He told me that in his early youth, he went to the Crimean War. He belonged to an officer in the cavalry and used to lead the regiment. I will tell more of that hereafter. The next morning, when I was well-groomed, Polly and Dolly came into the yard to see me and make friends. Harry had been helping his father since the early morning and had stated his opinion that I should turn out a regular brick. Polly brought me a slice of apple and Dolly a piece of bread and made as much of me as if I had been the black beauty of olden time. It was a great treat to be petted again and talked to in a gentle voice, and I let them see as well as I could that I wished to be friendly. Polly thought I was very handsome and a great deal too good for a cab if it was not for the broken knees. Of course, there's no one to tell us whose fault that was, said Jerry, and as long as I don't know, I shall give him the benefit of the doubt. For a firmer, neater stepper, I never rode. We'll call him Jack, after the old one, shall we, Polly? Do, she said, for I like to keep a good name going. Captain went out in the cab all the morning. Harry came in after school to feed me and give me water. In the afternoon, I was put into the cab. Jerry took as much pains to see if the collar and bridle fitted comfortably as if he had been John Manley over again. When the crupper was lit out a hole or two, it all fitted well. There was no bearing rein, no curb, nothing, but a plain ring snaffle. What a blessing that was. After driving through the side street, we came to the large cab stand where Jerry had said good night. On one side of this, Wide street were high houses with wonderful shop fronts, and on the other was an old church and churchyard surrounded by iron palisades. Alongside these iron rails, a number of cabs were drawn up waiting for passengers. Bits of hay were lying about on the ground. Some of the men were standing together talking. Some were sitting on their boxes reading the newspaper, and one or two were feeding their horses with bits of hay and a drink of water. We pulled up in the rank at the back of the last cab. Two or three men came round and began to look at me and pass their remarks. Very good for a funeral, said one. Too smart looking, said another, shaking his head in a very wise way. You'll find out something wrong with one of those fine mornings, or my name isn't Jones. Well, said Jerry pleasantly, I suppose I need not find it out till it finds me out, eh? And if so, I'll keep up my spirits a little longer. Then came up a broad-faced man dressed in a great gray coat with a great gray capes and great white buttons, a gray hat, and a blue comforter loosely tied round his neck. His hair was gray too, but he was a jolly looking fellow and the other men made way for him. He looked me all over as if he had been going to buy me and then straightening himself up with a grunt, he said, he's the right sort for you, Jerry. I don't care what you gave him for him. He'll be worth it. Thus my character was established on the stand. This man's name was Grant, but he was called Gray Grant or Governor Grant. He had been the longest on that stand of any of the men, and he took it upon himself to settle matters and stop disputes. He was generally a good-humored, sensible man, but if his temper was a little out, as it was sometimes, when he had drank too much, Nobody liked to come too near him or his fists, for he could deal a very heavy blow. The first week of my life as a cab horse was very trying. I had never been used to London and the noise, the hurry, the crowds of horses, carts, and carriages that I had to make my way through made me feel anxious and harassed. 
but I soon found that I could perfectly trust my driver and then I made myself easy and got used to it. Jerry was as good a driver as I had ever known and what was better, he took as much thought for his horses as he did for himself. He soon found out that I was willing to work and do my best and he never laid the whip on me unless it was gently drawing the end of it over my back when I was to go on. But generally, I knew this quite well by the way in which he took up the reins. And I believe his whip was more frequently struck up by his side than in his hand. In a short time, I and my master understood each other, as well as horse and man can do. In the stable, too, he did all that he could for our comfort. The stalls were the old-fashioned style, too much on the slope. But he had two movable bars fixed across the back of our stalls, so that at night and when we were resting, he just took off our halters and put up the bars, and thus we could turn about and stand whichever way we pleased. And as the stall divisions were lower at the back, Captain and I were able to touch each other's noses in a friendly way, as we horses always do with those we like. Jerry kept us very clean and gave us as much change of food as he could, and always plenty of it. But the best thing we had was our Sundays for rest. We worked so hard in the week that I do not think we could have kept it up but for that day. Besides, we had then a little time to enjoy each other's company and chat a bit. It was on these days that I learned my companion's history.